Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 8N, where we're going to use our new understanding of statistical tests to test the outcome of an experiment. We're going to create what's described as a null hypothesis, and then we're going to evaluate whether our data is sufficiently compelling that we can reject our null hypothesis. The p-value, as we discussed, tells us the probability of observing a particular discrepancy between the results expected under a certain hypothesis and the results that we observed. If the p-value is small, we can say, well, the chances that our observed data are explained by this hypothesis are very small, therefore something else must explain our data. Now, by convention, a cutoff is 0 0.05. That's a one chance in 20 that your observed result is explained by your hypothesis. In using this test, you might think that what you want to start with is you want to test the hypothesis that you care about, the exciting new idea you've had that might explain this provocative new data. But in fact, that's not the best way to proceed because, in fact, having a statistical test that says, oh, your data is consistent with your um, hypothesis is not a very compelling result when the cutoff is a 1 in 20 chance that your data is not explained by your hypothesis. A much more compelling result is obtained by first starting with not your favorite hypothesis, but a null hypothesis, which would be the simplest or least surprising explanation for the phenomenon that you're trying to study. And what you would hope for, if you have an exciting new idea, is that the p-value will be small enough that you can reject your null hypothesis and thereby support your new hypothesis. So now we're going to do this in the context of a problem. So here's the problem. You're doing a test cross between a doubly heterozygous plant, a tomato plant, and a homozygous recessive tester strain. And you're given the data and then asked, should you conclude that the two genes involved, S for the sweetness of the tomato and R for whether it's red or yellow, should you conclude that these genes are unlinked or linked? Now, before we analyze the data, and I'm going to cover up the data, we need to identify a null hypothesis. And in general, it's good statistical practice to decide on your null hypothesis before you collect your data. That way, your choice of a null hypothesis isn't biased by the answer that you want to get. So here's the first question. What should your null hypothesis be? And the answer is that your null hypothesis should be that the two genes are unlinked. Because this is the explanation that's more likely to be true a priori before you do the experiment. Because there are, um, I don't know how many chromosomes tomatoes have, but I think they have quite a few. Any two randomly chosen genes are more likely to be on different chromosomes than on the same chromosome. So they're more likely to be unlinked. You should choose this as your null hypothesis to test. Now, given this data and a hypothesis, your hypothesis is that the genes are unlinked. If that hypothesis is correct, you expect the frequency of each of the four types to be 0.25. That's what your null hypothesis predicts. But this is the frequencies that you got. And doing a chi-squared test tells you that the p-value is 0 0.06, that this hypothesis is correct. Should you discard this hypothesis given this p-value? And the answer is no. You shouldn't discard your hypothesis. Because 
that p-value is above the cutoff of 0 0.005. It's more than one, in, there's more than a one in 20 chance that this hypothesis, that the genes are unlinked, is correct. Now, this is, this is an unsatisfactory result because the p-value is almost 0 0.05. It's just a little bit higher. Would you want to conclude based on this data and this p-value that the genes are definitely not linked? No, you shouldn't do that. Uh, you, the experiment has not rejected your hypothesis. That does not mean your hypothesis is wrong. It may be wrong. It has a greater than 1 in 20 chance of being wrong. But if you're doing a project where you actually seriously care about whether S and R are linked. A p-value that's this close to the cutoff is basically a prompt that says you should probably do a bigger, do an experiment with a larger sample size to get better data that will allow you to either more confidently accept your hypothesis or more confidently reject it. In the context, of course, of a genetics problem on an exam, you would say p-value of 0 0.06 implies that the hypothesis of linkage, of, of no linkage, cannot be rejected. That's the correct answer. But how you would proceed as a scientist may be contingent on how important the result is to you. So in this lecture, we began by discussing why a null hypothesis was a boring but very useful thing. And we chose one for a particular set of experimental data, and then we tested whether this null hypothesis should be discarded. And then we had a little discussion about whether really we should keep it or whether we should test it additionally. This is the last lecture in Module 8. Coming up next is Module 9. We'll begin in Module 9 by revisiting the concept of heritability from Module 5, and then we'll expand these ideas to think about concepts of breeding and inbreeding in agriculture and livestock breeding, in uh, research animals, in conservation and evolution, and in human societies. I hope to see you there.